Hello everyone and welcome to this live stream session on Allied Health Sciences at DMU. Thank you very much for joining us. Please make sure you leave us a comment to say hi, we'd really love to hear from you. My name's George, I work in the marketing team for the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences here at DMU and I'm going to be supporting with hosting the session uh, with you all this morning. I'm joined by a panel of academics and we're all going to be able to give you a bit of information about what September is going to look like uh, when you join us here at DMU. And we also have a current student with us this morning. So let's start by introducing ourselves. So if I hand over to TJ first. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is TJ Moore. I'm a senior lecturer in biomedical sciences, and I'm the program lead for the biomedical sciences program here at DMU. Perfect. Thanks, TJ. And Pip? Hello, my name's Pip Cornelius. I'm a senior lecturer on the speech and language therapy programme. I'm the admissions tutor, um, senior fellow of the Higher Education Academy. And Guy? Morning, everybody. Uh, my name's Guy Thomas. I'm senior lecturer and programme leader for the Health and Wellbeing in Society course. Thank you. And Kay? Yeah. Hi there, um, nice to see everybody here this morning. My name is Kay Cleaver. I'm a senior lecturer on the Diagnostic Radiography Programme here at DMU. And last but not least, Foyan. Hi, um, I'm Foyan. I study medical science and I'm going into third year this year. Perfect. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, so. For the next hour, we're going to be hearing from our academics and from our current student about their experience of online learning. We'll also be answering any questions that you've got, so please make sure that you add them into the comments section and we'll try and get through as many as we can. So, firstly, congratulations for staying positive about your future and choosing university. We're living in an extraordinary year that has affected all of our lives and our plans. And DMU understands completely what a significant year this is for you, because it is for us too. If you're planning to start or continue your higher education journey in 2020, we want you to know that DMU is here for you every step of the way. Your DMU Future is an initiative that we've launched here at De Montfort University that's a way of connecting safe campus living, one-to-one -one time with academics and a great student experience, all within our diverse and welcoming community here at DMU. We're committed to ensuring you get the extra help that you need with work, life and study. So obviously we've been really busy carefully planning for the upcoming academic year. 
And what we're going to be doing in this morning session is hearing a bit more from our academics about what you can expect from teaching and your experience when you join us here at the start of the academic year. So I'm going to hand over first of all to TJ to give us a bit of an overview as to what that might look like. Thanks, George. Yeah, it's 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 an exciting time. I know COVID's really, really stressful and the way we've had to change the way we, we do things around the world and just for our day-to-day -day lives. And that's no different here at DMU. We, we've been working really, really hard trying to make sure that coming into the new academic year, your experience is going to be as close to the real thing as being on campus as we can possibly do. And by doing what, what we're doing with that is we're, we're trying to take a blended learning approach. So where we can and where size of classes uh, allows and permits, we will then try have some things done on campus. A lot of our learning will be done online, but that's also going to be a blended approach to learning. It'll still be like you're in a classroom. It will still be like you're, you're interacting with your classmates and with, with, with your lecturer. So the best thing that you can do is to have that experience of being in a classroom, but online. You'll be able to interact with them, ask questions. Everything that we're doing is trying to make that experience as close to the real thing as possible. What we're also doing is we get a lot of questions from our students about what about practicals? Practicals are supposed to be hands-on. So in the first instance, we're actually investing in fantastic online technology and online software programs that actually allow us for you to have a kind of a hands-on experience. You're going to get to know the theory. You're going to be able to see what it's like to actually do that practical. And then when eventually we get back onto campus, you'll be able to do it yourself. All right. So we've got all of that in place. Our staff have been working really, really hard to make sure that we are all familiar with the software that we're going to use to teach you online. Here at DMU, we have a virtual learning environment called Blackboard. For some of you might have used that before. If not, it's where everything that you're going to need for your studies is placed. Your lecture notes, your handbooks, your guides, um, discussion boards for chatting with your, your classmates and your lecturers, all of the contact details, everything that you need will be on Blackboard. Now, normally when we're on campus, Students also have availability to Blackboard. We're going to rely on it a little bit more going forward because that's going to be our central point for all of our communication. Blackboard is also somewhere where we give our live lectures. So if you have a scheduled lecture and it's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, which we call then synchronous teaching, you will get to have a live experience online with your classmates and your lecturers. We continually try and find new and innovative ways to teach. DMU is TEF gold rated, which means the teaching excellence framework. So we've got an exciting uh, team of, of lecturers and staff who all do their best to make sure that the learning that you have is at an industry standard, is innovative, and basically ticks all the boxes and makes sure that you are having a fantastic experience when you come to DMU. Part of that is also learning employability skills. Because we are always in contact with industry, we make sure that the content that we deliver matches what you need to know to increase those employability skills. I'm just trying to think what else I can tell you. George, is there is there anything I've missed out or that we should be focusing on? I'm, I'm in a little bit of a... I don't think so. It's whether maybe there are any examples specifically for biomedical science perhaps in terms of how that might look come October or some of the planning that's that's been okay. going into lab work that kind of thing that's great so when it comes to biomedical science we are quite a big group we're, we're, we're one of the bigger programs at DMU especially in first year some of your subjects you will be in classes with two to three hundred students but that's not a problem for us because we've managed to be doing this online already you will still have those large lectures but they will be online. Traditionally, we would do them on campus, but because of social distancing, it can be a little bit of tricky getting 300 people into one room. So because we follow government guidelines here at DMU, the large, any large classes will be delivered online. 
But like I've said, we're going to make sure that that is as close to the real thing as possible. When it comes to the practicals, we usually still break students up into smaller groups of about 30 to 40 students per group. And then what we do is we deliver those online. Like I said earlier, we've invested in some fantastic online software where you'll be able to digitally interact with what you would normally do in the lab. Also, a lot of our lecturers and our technical staff have been working really hard behind the scenes to make demonstration videos on campus in our labs using all of the, the equipment that you would normally use. So that when you finally get to go into the lab, it's all going to look really familiar to you. So you'll be familiar with the faces of the staff and the technical staff, the surroundings and the equipment. For biomedical sciences in the first semester, everything is going to be online. Once the government guidelines change, and as, as long as we can still safely social distance, in the second semester, we hope that we'll be able to get back onto campus more regularly for you to be able to have some hands-on experience in the lab. A reminder that we are IBMS accredited, which stands for the Institute for Biomedical Sciences. We have run everything that we are planning on doing. We have run them by the IBMS, and they've basically ticked the box to say to us, yes, we believe that you are doing the best that you can and the best for our students, and you will still meet all of the requirements for your accreditation in what you're doing. So you don't need to worry that you're going to be getting something that's maybe substandard. Not going to happen. OK, so everything that we do is going to be pitched at the right level and you will still be getting a top quality experience when you come to DMU. George, I think that's about it for the moment, um, unless there's something specific. I think that was perfect. Thank you, TJ. Really, really no useful. Worries. Um, okay, so should we come to you, Pip, to see if there's anything to add there from speech and language therapy? I think you just need to unmute yourself. I do, I was <laughs> muted. Thanks, George, and thanks, TJ. That was really comprehensive. Um, speech and language therapy, um, we also have been working very closely with the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists and the Healthcare Professions Council. Um, to plan our way forward and we have an idea that um, we're going to be using online um, teaching, the synchronous teaching um, as TJ has outlined. We will be providing um, recorded uh, podcasts of lectures and we will be having small group seminars um, online. We will have one-to-one -one tutoring online um, and we will have um, practicals. The practicals uh, for some of the, um, the course, particularly um, around phonetics and professional skills, we will see you on campus because for one day a week on a Thursday um, in term one, you will be coming onto campus and you will be having your practical sessions and your professional skills. Um, this will be a really good opportunity to meet um, members of the teaching team and to meet each other. Um, and we think that's, um, we're very lucky, we're, we're quite a small course, 35 students in our cohort. So we, we're, we're pretty um, convinced that we can do that um, quite well with social distancing. Um, we have clinical placements <clears throat> on the programme and in first year um, and in term one, we are anticipating that we will be able to operate a, a telehealth model um, so that you will be able to have uh, video conferencing, video meetings with um, people in residential settings, which is part of the first year placements. So that's the plan. Um, and we'll keep you updated. Um, we're, we're fairly sure that we can work with that. Um, but if for any reason we can't, we will have um, other virtual activities um, that we can that we can use for um, placement learning. And that's it from speech and language therapy. Perfect. Thank you, Pip. Um, Kay, over to you. Lovely, thank you. Um, just to reiterate what um, TJ said, um, we've been looking as a team approach, the whole academic team have been working hard to make sure that this blended approach to learning that we're offering not only is online, but that the whole programme fits together so that you're learning the technique for something 
prior to going and practicing these skills in our x-ray suite now that's um our brand new piece of kit that we're all desperate to get back to we've got a dedicated imaging room so it's our own x-ray equipment based on campus that students learn to x-ray um, and position and the actual technique involved around these examinations so because we are a very small cohort we've only have 16 students a year um, we're hoping that we can get back to that very very soon um, with appropriate social distancing throughout the whole of lockdown um, we have uh, maintained our links with our placement providers we have very strong links with local healthcare. Um, so that we've been working out the teaching and learning together. So it's been a real collaborative approach. We've attended um, similar online conferences together to look and see how that we can work things out and find the best way forward for our students and a good way to share um, good practice to make sure that those practical skills um, are learned and then the student is further supported when they are able to return to placement. Um, our first years usually go out in semester two and we're hoping that come January that they'll still be able to do that but as I say we're in constant communication and working hard with our placements to make sure that that can happen uh, and whenever it is safe to do so. That's about it really. Wonderful, thank you, Kay. Um, and Guy. Uh, cheers. So, just as sort of as the other guys have been saying, that we've been working hard as part of health and well-being to make sure that we can adapt all of our teaching using different apps, software, and we can move it mainly online. The way we're going to do it is, as TJ was saying, is through this sort of blended approach. Uh, because, as we mentioned, getting about 100 people in a single room for a lecture is going to be very challenging. So all lectures are going to be moved online, so you can essentially engage with them in your own time. Then through the blended approach, what we're looking at is an idea where we'll probably have one week where it's an online workshop, seminar, where you'll get some activities, engage with the uh, lecturer live. This will be online through something like Blackboard Collaborate. The next week, that'll probably be face to face, uh, and then so on and so forth throughout the academic year. Um, we've been able to adapt all of our teaching using these apps, software, and actually this means that I think our course is gonna be more engaging and accessible than ever. I've been doing meetings with students this morning, uh, which is great, it works really well using MS Teams, which means they're able to screen share with me so I can look at their essay plans, I can highlight stuff which I think they need to change, I can send them reading, I can send them links, and I can send it live in the chat functions. So actually it's more useful than sitting in my office and meeting face to face. What we're also gonna be doing is that all teaching which takes place face to face will also be run virtually, meaning that students who, for whatever reason, they might be shielding for themselves or for those close to them. It may be that Test and Trace has got in contact with you and asked you to isolate for 14 days. Whichever reason, we're also going to run those virtually, those people who aren't able to get to, to campus, so they won't miss out on any of the content of the course. We don't have any of the challenges of having to work with governing bodies um, and professional bodies, but we think actually in terms of sort of our graduate outcomes, uh, we have students who go on and do almost anything, everything. So we have further study, additional training, we do things such as social work, as an associate, specialist nursing, graduate jobs in any sector you can name, health promotion, charities, local authorities, the police, graduate schemes. These skills which we're going to be building up in terms of working remotely and learning as part of virtual environments are increasingly important to all of these roles. And actually our hope is that you guys can learn some fantastic skills which you can add to your CVs and enhance your employability after graduation. Thanks, Guy. Um, that's really, really useful, everybody. Thank you. So obviously back in March, we all had to adapt really quickly to online teaching and learning. So I think it'd be helpful to hear from Boyin about her experience of, of what that was like. Yeah, um, hi. Um, so it wasn't too bad. The change was, um, obviously it was a bit drastic because it was in 
um, the app on campus and then we had to switch to online. But there was a lot of resources that was available to us for us to be able to contact our lecturers if anything went wrong. Um, so numbers would have been provided, um, emails as well would have been provided, like emergency lines, but especially if you was during an exam and something happened, um, you was able to contact your um, lecturer or program leader to notify them or like get help. Um, there was also the use of, oh yeah, so obviously we have libraries, um, obviously the libraries closed during coronavirus. So the majority of library books are also online. So that was also not an issue. Everything was available online. Um, in terms of computers and laptops, because obviously you have um, learning centers and the library was full of um, computers for people that don't have access to these. Um, and you was provided a laptop. So a laptop was sent to your house um, for you to, in order to complete your um, coursework or your exams which was really good as well. Um, we was able to collaborate with other students. We had this virtual classroom where you could um, go, like if you and your friends wanted to, um, or your course mates wanted to um, talk about something all together, you could literally just go into that virtual classroom and like everyone else in your cohort or um, your course would come on and you could literally discuss um, whatever you needed to discuss, whether it be a topic on a question, like practice question that is. Um, but yeah, it was really help. like there was really a lot of resources to help us during the <laughs> down period. And yeah, it was a smooth transition onto the online scene. So yeah. Lovely, thank you, Boyan. And how did you find in terms of accessing academics, if you, if you did have queries or concerns around everything, anything how easy was that for you over the last few it months was easy because obviously um as i said they provided phone numbers um as well as emails so if the email route was like if you couldn't wait like an hour for an email or if it was something urgent you could literally just phone the number that they provided and they would literally answer your questions and help you through it, whatever you needed excellent lovely thank you okay um is there anything else anybody wants to add before we move on to some of the questions that we've got? No? I think it, yeah, well, I was going to say that I, I just think it, it, it's great that we, we've had feedback like that from Foyen, but from our other students as well, because not all of our courses had finished their, their, their lectures when COVID happened and the lockdown happened. Some of our courses in the School of Allied Health Sciences continue throughout the year. So there's had to be that adaptation of moving online. And we've had fantastic responses from our students saying how much they've actually enjoyed being online. They've, they've, there's been benefits for some students um, by having their lectures online. They haven't had to get the bus. They haven't had to rush to lectures. So that there's definitely been that bonus. I can see Foyan's laughing. So she's, she, she's definitely been one of those students who hasn't, hasn't missed rushing for the bus. Um, so I, I think it's important that we, as, as long as they, we, we can see all of the problems with COVID, but we can also see that there's a lot of positives that are coming out of it and, and new learning opportunities for all of us. And by moving online, you are also going to be learning a whole lot of new digital skills that are going to make you more employable in the future. Because as we can see, everything in the world keeps going more and more digital. This gives you a fantastic opportunity to get firsthand experience of that digital experience. Pip, you wanted to add something? I did. Um, it's just reminded me, we surveyed our students um, before the end of term and they were really impressed with how we'd moved online so quickly and the support that we were giving them. So you're quite right. Um, uh, it has been really appreciated and they've, they've had a lot out of it. I think another important thing to highlight here at DMU is we did we, we did go online. We kept all of our exams in or most of our exams in place. We managed to do a lot of our exams online. I know that there are other universities that that didn't do that. They didn't go online. They 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 took longer to do it. So DMU has been very very proactive in making sure that our students have the best experience possible. That we are still delivering what we promised to deliver when they started with us. And and we we we've gone all out to make sure that that happens as and when we can. I'd just say as well, the same as Pip, um, we have surveyed students, all the feedback we've had has been really, really positive. 
we've had the same problems. We've even had to move things like group presentations online, which was a learning curve for us and the students. But after the initial sort of shock uh, of it all sort of happening, actually the feedback has been it's been great. It's worked really well. And actually, in many respects, getting to see your presentation from your own bedroom or living room is actually a lot more sort of comfortable than having to come in and stand in a lecture theatre in front of me. Uh, so, yeah, so far, it's been really good from our perspective, too. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. So, yeah, all around, I think we, we're seeing the positives of, of, of being online and the, the positive experiences of both staff and students here at DMU. So yeah, it's it, it's a challenge, and we keep we keep going with it and going with the flow and adapting how and when we need to, promising and offering the best experience that you can have, even though we are in the midst of the COVID pandemic. George, amazing, thank you guys. Okay, should we have a look at our first question? <clears throat> So the first question we've got, uh, will I still have one-to-one -one contact with academics? So TJ, do you want to start us off and then we'll work our way around? Great stuff, yeah. So will you have one-on-one -on -one contact with your academic? Yes, that might be virtual though. So you can still have one-on-one -on -one contact with, with your academic, um, whether through email, through the, the online virtual learning environment, which I mentioned earlier called Blackboard. So there's ways for you to meet and almost have like a Zoom call um, we, we use the virtual environment to do that. So you can have a video call with your lecturers, with your personal tutors, depending on your course and depending on what the social distancing rules are. When more and more staff move back onto campus, you will eventually be able to meet them in person, obviously with social distancing rules in place. But your, your lecturers and your, your tutors will always be available to you throughout your academic year, whether you contacted them by telephone, by email, or by a discussion board on the virtual learning environment. Perfect. Does anyone have anything they want to add to that? Yes. Um, we will also have the opportunity for face-to-face -face meetings um, because our students will be coming onto campus once a week. Perfect. Can We're also going to try and make sure there's a chance for face to face to meet your personal tutor at some point during the beginning of term. Uh, we're not entirely sure how we get to that, but we want to make sure there's a chance to meet your personal tutor face to face, along with everything that TJ and Kate have just been talking about. Yeah, brilliant. Anything to add, Kay? Or um, just to agree with everybody else, really. Yeah. Um, we'd be disappointed um, as a team if students felt that they couldn't come to us with any issues or any comments or any help that they needed. That's what we're here for. Um, there's many, many different ways to get in touch with us as TJ and Pip have all described. Um, yeah, we just want to hear from you. We want to be able to help you. And we do have that advantage of being a very small cohort we do get to know our students really, really well. So the individualized support that they receive it, it is really, really very, very good. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Okay, uh, next question. Will the assessments be different? Um, okay, should we, Guy, should we start with you? Yep, uh, so in terms of assessments, the vast majority, there should be no difference. And judging upon when we might come out of sort of government mandated sort of lockdowns and social distancing, there may be no need to change things at all. The only thing that might need a little bit of adapting is uh, group work and group assessments. So we have at level four, so in your first year, a, um, a podcast assignment. So you work as a group to create a podcast about a health issue. If you're not able to meet as a group, you can still meet virtually, which we were able to do uh, in the year just gone because we still have group projects. So you can either be emailing each other, if you're using the virtual environments uh, that we have access to, any number of ways to do it. And then you can record it yourselves and essentially present virtually because it's a podcast, you have record it. We've even had group presentations where people, like I said, have recorded themselves to camera and then they sort of knit it together and everybody's in their bedrooms, living rooms, whatever. And it works really, really well. Everybody sort of muddled through. So really, there should be no real difference to assessments. There might just be a slight tweaking in terms of how you meet up with a group for group work. 
Excellent. Okay. Um, Pip, let's move over to you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we have a variety of assessments on speech and language therapy. Um, none of them um, have to be delivered face to face. Some of them are assignments where they're submitted online. Um, we do have a, a couple of assessments in first year that have traditionally been face to face, but we had to do those online this year through um, video uh, assessment, um, one to one. Um, or for my particular subject, I made a video of myself and students had um, access to that in a, a timed period and then they sent their transcripts in for me uh, by email um, and it worked really well and I compared the results with previous years and they were in line with previous years so students weren't disadvantaged and they actually enjoyed it um, well if you can enjoy an assessment a practical assessment um, but they they were comfortable with it um, because it was in line with some of the learning materials that they have already been using which are videos of me producing um, sounds for them to identify worked very well brilliant thank you tj yeah, so the, the assessments, some of them will need to be different. Um, we've already experienced that this year. During during COVID, we had to change some of our online or some of our exams, our final year exams, where people would usually come into an exam hall and write a paper-based exam. We couldn't do that because of COVID. But what we did do is we managed to change that assessment to an online exam. Um, we it worked really, really well. Students had a little bit more time in which to do it. And it worked really, really well. So, and as Foyen said earlier, during those exams, if you had any problems, you could reach out to a member of staff quite easily by just giving them a phone call. So although the style and the way in which the exam might be presented, we are still testing the same amount of knowledge. We are still making sure that you are getting the best experience that you can and, and being able to earn the right kind of marks for your topic. Just as Pip said, there was no real difference in her change in assessment in, in the quality that they, that they were receiving or the marks that the students were attaining. So although there might be slight differences in how certain assessments are produced and asked for you to deliver them, the content, which is the most important thing, remains essentially the same. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Um, we're lucky anyway, because here at DMU, we have our universal design for learning program. So a lot of our assessments are organized very differently anyway. So they're not all paper based. They're not all online. They're not all um, sitting in an exam hall, as TJ described. We like to use lots of different ways to assess the learning that our students um, undertake. We've had to change some of ours very slightly. We did only have one paper-based exam, which went to an, an online exam and, and an open book format rather than a, a knowledge known format. Um, we have a poster presentation that students, rather than coming in and delivering a live dialogue to accompany their poster, they were able to record that online using online software. Um, when we spoke to the students afterwards, they said they preferred to do it that way. So they've they've got a lot of extra IT skills out of this. Um, as a lecturer, I've learned loads as well as about how to, to look at these, how to manage these situations. Um, but the students have really enjoyed it. They like the opportunity to do things a little bit differently. And they like the idea that, because you can always do a live presentation better. So they could re-record it if they wanted to, if they weren't entirely happy. One lady actually said the difficult and the challenge for her was knowing when to stop and when to say, no, that, that's OK, that's good enough, because she kept redoing and redoing. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we have made changes, but I think they've all been very, very positive and very well received by our current first year. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. OK, um, our next question, I think. How will learning be affected for lab courses? So I'll come to you, TJ. Yeah, so I've touched on this a little bit at the beginning, but I'll reiterate it again. So because of DMU following government guidelines and because of the size of our classes, the amount of students that we have, especially in first year, 
doing lab courses in the first term is going to be a little bit tricky because we can't safely social distance with all of those students and be able to give you the quality that you need. So we've decided that for the first term, we won't be doing anything on campus because your health is one of the most important things to us. So we we're making sure that that's something that we, we take really, really seriously. But to make sure that you still get the knowledge, which is the most important thing, and exposure to some of those skills, we'll be delivering either demonstrations online for lab courses or using state-of-the-art software. You're going to be able to use a digital lab to basically have a go at it, experience what it might be like so that you're testing the knowledge in a virtual lab environment. So although you might not get the hands-on experience straight away, you're still going to be able to walk away knowing what it's about and being able to apply your knowledge, which is what your employers want to know that you can do when you finally graduate. So although not physically in the lab in the first term and semester, you'll definitely be getting the knowledge and the skills that you need from everything that we do, especially in our lab-based courses. Perfect. And just to open that up, I don't know if people, Kay, you want have anything to add for sort of clinical skills to that? Um, yes. Um, the practical aspect of phonetics um, I mentioned earlier um, will be delivered face to face. Um, we have a speech analysis strand to one of the modules and that is um, lab work, but that doesn't start um, until term two. So we're anticipating that we will be able to access that in term two, but there is a plan if we can't. Yeah, we're, we're in a similar position to Pip and her team. Um, unfortunately, you can't really learn to x-ray patients without working with patients um, and making sure that um, our students get access to those placement opportunities at the earliest possible time. Our current first year are due to go out on placement from January 21. So we've got absolutely everything crossed that that will still happen. And obviously appropriate um, procedures and government say so has to be in place for that to happen first. But in the meantime, we've been working with the first year that have just finished and we've been giving them lots of formative work at home. So they've been patient positioning their relatives. They've been <laughs> practicing technique any way that they can. We've had um, nursing skills and practical care skills being demonstrated. How to clean up a blood spill. I have never seen so much tomato ketchup in my life <laughs> thrown around the worktop but it's a way to practice those clinical skills that they've already learned. So we're trying to keep those ideas and those principles fresh in our students' mind so that when they do come back to placement, it's not like restarting again. Um, but yeah, everything crossed for January. I, I love the sound of the, of the tomato ketchup. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you know what's important with that? Something that we do here at DMU is called co-creation. We like our students to work with us to develop our content. So if you've got a fantastic idea of how you think a practical idea could be demonstrated, share it with us, share it with your, with your classmates. It's always new ways that we can show how things work, new ideas, innovative ideas. So I love that. Um, I think maybe we need to steal that from you for our course, Kay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Amazing, right, thank you. Um, Okay, should we see if we've got another question? So will I still be able to access the software that I need for my course? This is probably one for everybody. Should we start? Uh, Pip, let's come to you first. Um, we don't have any specialist software apart from the speech analysis software, which um, we won't be using until term two. Um, I have a couple of um, videos um, to demonstrate um, how to use it, um, but actually you won't be using it yourselves until term two. So as Kay said, fingers crossed for term two, there is a, a plan um, if um, we, we still have um, social distancing measures in place and it means that we can't run those classes um, and we, we'll plan accordingly um, when we hear more about social distancing towards Christmas. Thank you. Uh Thank you. Um, Guy, any particular software needed for health and well-being students? 
uh, we again, we don't really anticipate any issues with this um, because generally you don't need anything specialist other than some sort of word processing software. So Microsoft Word would be the most uh, common one. For research methods, um, we do use some data analysis software, which usually we gain access to on campus, but that is usually in the second term as well. So, I mean, touch wood, by then uh, we'll be allowed on campus to be able to use those. But we do have ways and means of allowing you to access that remotely. Uh, and actually, again, we might do that anyway, because actually the way we're looking at it is we can make it more engaging if we do make it remote. Uh, it may be easier for us to teach. Uh, so no, there's no real issues in terms of accessing software at all. OK, and Kay? Um, we don't have any specialist software specifically for radiography. We have a very long wish list that we would like to uh, uh, develop into the program for future years, um, which is ongoing, obviously, for course development. Um, we, we use software at the moment that the students are very familiar with. They're very used to using Blackboard, and we've decided to start with what they already know and build on that. So at the moment, they have access to everything that they would need to do, and that works well from home. Um, yeah. Perfect. OK. And TJ, anything for your course areas? Yeah, so traditionally we, we, we use all of the software that we need as students um, at DMU. So anything that you might need at our library or for accessing your, um, your, your course material, all those softwares are available all the time in any case. So you don't need to worry about that. Our virtual learning environment, that's a software package as well. You get access to that. Um, I'm just trying to think what else. So any kind of software that you would need that you would normally have on campus, you will also have access to if you're off campus. I mentioned earlier that to replace some of our laboratory practicals, um, we've got new software that you can use. And of course, you're going to have access to that. So everything that you would need for your course to run smoothly, you'll definitely have access to, whether it's the library or accessing different websites or software for doing statistics. All of that is always available to all of our students. Perfect, thank you. And Foyan, how have you found accessing any particular software for your course areas? Has it been quite straightforward, easy to do? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's the same as it's always been, to be honest, you know, with Blackboard and library access and what else? What other? I, don't, I, can't, I can't think of any more softwares, but um, there's, um, it's pretty easy, it's straightforward. It's not and you've been hard. able to get everything that you've needed to continue yeah. with studying and perfect. Brilliant. OK. Um, right. Let's move to our next question. OK, so placements. I think we have touched on this a little bit, so I don't know whether there's anything maybe, Pip, that you want to add to that. Um, thanks, George. <clears throat> yes, um, placements will be um, virtual um, in, in term one. And it will be the, the same um, people that you would have um, had your placement with face to face. So they're going to be video. That's the that's the plan. Um, in term two, we're anticipating things being back to normal so that we would be able to undertake face to face placements there. But um, we can move to the, the telehealth model in term two uh, as well. Um, so we're, we're anticipating that we will be able to provide the clinical hours um, that that you need. Thank you. Perfect. Um, okay, or anyone else, is there anything else in terms of placements that you'd like to add on? Yeah, as, as I say, we're working really hard and alongside our current placement providers as well to try and streamline this process for our students because we know it's a big concern. They're all desperate to get back to placement and it's obviously a big worry for them going forwards. Um, planning for a January start for the first year is very much underway. Um, if this is delayed further, dare I say it, if it is, um, there is a plan B. There's also a plan C and there's also a plan D. Um, we're very fortunate in that our course isn't hours led. So there isn't a minimum hours component associated with it. It is all competency led. So the focus is on ensuring that students have got the necessary skills by the time that they qualify at the end of year three. And how we organise that within that time frame um, can be very, very flexible. We have the backing of the Healthcare Professions Council to be able to work in that way. 
um, it's just waiting for further direction and and keeping that flexibility in mind for both the programme and for very conscious of how that affects our students that we're supporting. For, for, for biomedical sciences and for medical sciences, we don't do any placements in the first year. So for first year students, it's nothing that you need to, to worry about or concern yourself about. Our placements are optional placements and they're usually after the second year. Uh, our current second year students that are planning on going into placement, of course, as I said earlier at DMU, it's, it's your health that is paramount. So we're working with our placement providers to make sure that if students can still go on their placements, that they are looked after, that they are safe, and that everybody around them will be safe as well. So we're doing our best to make sure that those experiences can still happen where they can. Staying here on uh, health and well-being, we have an optional placement module, but that's not until your third year. So for you guys who are planning on joining us from September, not something which in theory you should have to worry about. I mean, again, touch wood, by the time you're entering your third year, uh, some degree of normality will have sort of returned. Um, but regardless of that, we are actually having students return to placements now because we make sure that all of our students are treated as a member of staff by all of the employers, which means that they have to follow the official guidance and they have to be protected in the same way that a member of staff would. And we also have placement opportunities which are remote. So heaven forbid, this is still going on in two years time, but we have remote opportunities like running social media accounts for charities and things like that. So there will be ways and means, but let's all just hope and pray that in two years time, this isn't an issue. Yes, definitely. Um, okay, I think we have time for one more question. Okay, so I think this is a question we'll start with Foyan. Um, so what advice would you give to a student starting this year? So if you can cast your mind back to going into that first year of university, um, have you got any tips for students coming in? You know what? <laughs> it's not as easy as you think coming up with advice because you, you, you really learn as you go. But um, what would I do? I would say don't stress yourself too much in first year because first year is is like you know the time for you to really um, explore and like learn new things. So you shouldn't be held then on um, being too hard on yourself. I feel like in first year, obviously still do the work and still obviously focus and try your best, but um, don't lose your mind over trying to get everything perfect because you're going to make mistakes. Um, what else would I give? What else out of it? Oh, um, I would also say try and have fun in your course because I feel like if you find your course fun, you would also you won't find it as um as a what's the word a burden like you won't find it as a a task as like yeah all the time you would find it as like oh this is fun like I love my course and I feel like because I loved my course in first year. <laughs> It was a breeze. Like, you just need to find the fun in what you're doing for you to stay sane, basically. But um, other than that, just, you know, have fun with your course, you know. I don't know. I actually don't know what else to say about this. <laughs> I think that's good advice. I think you've given a lot of good advice there. Um, yeah, Can that, I say something? So yeah, of course. Um, also, uh, we have an excellent system of personal tutoring. So um, your personal tutor is there to support your learning throughout your time at university. And they're there to optimize your learning opportunities so that you work very closely with them to maximize your learning. And they are someone who is there for you. So any worries or concerns that you have, contact them and they can point you in the direction of specialists if you need that. Um, or, or they can um, help pedagogically with your learning, so that they're a real, they have a really important role um, to play. And uh, I love being a personal tutor, um, and I love the relationship that I develop with my tutees. Um, and I'm in touch with them, um, you know, tutees that are that are long gone. So uh, yes, it's a really important role. And the th the key thing to remember is that they are there to support you. 
Uh, exactly, Poop. And it's uh, the other thing I would say is, first of all, congratulations. If you're coming to, to study, congratulations. And going to university is a fantastic experience. It's a growing experience. Um, it's going to be so different, especially this year. It's going to be a little bit different to usual because we do starting things online. But accept that challenge. Make it work for you because everything that you learn during this time is going to be beneficial. Please don't look at it as going, I'm not getting the same experience that everybody else has. Things change. If we can adapt to that change, we can get so much out of it. And like Foyen said, enjoy it. Um, Pippa said, we've got fantastic personal tutors. You need to make the most out of it. Use your personal tutors. Use them as a, as a resource, as someone to help and guide you. It's only going to be as good. The experience of university is only going to be as good as you make it, how much you put into it. Don't be passive with being a student. Be active, and you will have a fantastic time. Um, and we look forward to seeing you very, very soon, if not online, hopefully in person in the not-too-distant future. Absolutely. Um, right, well, thank you, everybody. I don't know if there's any final comments from any of the panel. If there's any advice for across the summer, perhaps, of what our applicants could be doing before they join us, anything you think they should be trying to prepare for? Ooh. Have a good rest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> It, yeah, I, I, I agree, Kay. Enjoy a vacation. You don't have to try to get ahead of the curve. Um, there's going to be a lot of change and a lot of new things for you to do, and there will be plenty of time for you to do that. So enjoy what of, what, of the summer, what you can, um, even, even with, with lockdowns and social distancing. Make the most of this time to, to rest and be ready for, for, the, for the oncoming year. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, um, that they want answering. We're, we're all still around. Uh, we will be taking bits of holidays here and there, but um, email us um, if you've got any, any worries or if you want um, a reading list, um, just email and we can answer and we can give you what you need. Perfect. Exactly. Lovely. Thank you, everyone. OK, um, well, I think that's all we've got time for this morning. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you to our lovely panel for all of your um, advice and information this morning. In terms of where you can go to get more information about your DMU future, so how planning is going at DMU for, for the start of term and, and how that works across the board. So in terms of academic wise, what's happening with your planning, some of the information we've been talking about this morning, but also more broadly around the facilities that we'll have available about how we're gonna make sure to keep you safe whilst you are on campus, how accommodation is gonna work, where to go uh, if you have any questions about specific issues or, or queries. That can all be found online on our um, Your DMU Future page of the website. There it is. Um, so make sure that you check that out. And that is a, a great source of information over the coming weeks if you do have any queries. We would also really love you to join us for an event that we've got on Friday. So for anybody who has accepted an offer with DMU, so you're a firm offer holder with us. We have an event called your DMU Big Night In happening on Friday night. Um, it's from seven till nine. It is an opportunity to meet some of our DSU team. It's a chance to meet other applicants that are gonna be joining us um, in their first year come October. Um, and it's a, a first virtual experience of a bit of social life at DMU. So please make sure you book your place and come and join us there. And that's everything. So enjoy the rest of your day and we hope to see you all very soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.